Hi, everybody. This is Roseanne and Jenny with Mindset Mondays. Uh, we are on Facebook Live right now, and uh, my phone is blowing up. And welcome to our podcast listeners for the first time as well, because we're going to be releasing this as um, a podcast ep episode. And so um, we will have a multitude of things going on and helping people in uh, two different places this week. Um, today, we are going to be talking about Ask Yourself Why. And before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit about Jenny and I. Uh, we both work for the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Programs. I am an enrollment coach and a customer uh, journey coach or client journey coach within something called Project 90, which is a 90-day um, quit alcohol program. And uh, Jenny is a community manager for something called the 30 day no alcohol challenge. Both of us actually started in the 30 day challenge. And, um, and both of us ended up hopping on board project 90. And both of us find ourselves working here with people having fun. And uh, I think we can I can speak to both of us as I say, we probably have of the best jobs in the world because we watch people just transform their lives in such a short period of time. I am going to have Melanie, who is in the background, post my personal two-minute story. We're working on getting Jenny's, um, but if you want to know a little bit about my, my journey, it will be posted uh, in the Facebook Live event. And... I think we're ready to start asking ourselves why, right? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about. I think a lot of us, um, for those of us listening, we've probably given ourselves a lot of whys. But if you're really considering starting this journey with intent, um, there needs to be a deep reason for the why that you keep in mind as you walk through this journey, because you need to have something to look forward to. And both Jenny and I thought it would be a great um, way uh, to share this with our personal whys. We each have a different why, and hopefully you can connect with one of them. Um, for me, I, uh, I am a, I guess, three years divorced. Uh, a lot of my drinking dealt with my sadness um, during my marriage and feeling lonely. And um, as I as I kind of realized this life um, that I needed to navigate post divorce, I needed to ask myself who I was and who I wanted to be and who I wanted to hang out with. I, I think we're born to have relationship with other people. And so as I thought through, like, who do I want to be um, connected to uh, with, with my life in the future? Who do I want to be? I recognized that I didn't want to be with anybody who was like me because it, it wouldn't be fun. It was like I didn't like me at the time. I drank too much and I partied too much. And I, you know what I mean? I, and with this in the back of my mind, like I really shouldn't be drinking. I really shouldn't be doing this. I really could be doing something else. So my why was opening up the world to a different possibility about who I was and who I could be. Um, Jenny, what was your why? Yeah, thanks, Suzanne. My why was probably e equally big and, and also relationship based. Um, my husband, Clive, as some of you will know, died of cancer last May after a, a five-year struggle, which was quite all-consuming. And after he died, I, I knew that I was going to have to find some way of, of just filling that quite big gaping hole in my life, really, and, and rebuilding my life. Um, one of the last things Clive said to me, before he died, just a couple of days before he died, was Jenny keep going, and, and he knew there would be a hole in my life, and, and and I knew that if I didn't find a way of filling it and find something that was purposeful and meaningful for me, I would just end up filling that hole with alcohol, and and I could see the the downward spiral in front of me, and and I didn't want that, 
So I was really looking for, for something to, to keep me going, as, as Ty asked me to. So double motivation there, really, something that would honour him and, and something that would give me meaning as I moved into a, a very uncharted territory um, for me facing life without him. So I'm curious, though, with that explanation, like, if you had a moment where you struggled with the trigger, what what was going through your mind about the, your why? Do you, can you think of a time where you just had to remind yourself of the why? Oh, I, I wrote it down, actually. When I joined Project 90, which I joined, it came for me at the perfect time. I joined Project 90 three weeks after Clive passed away. And one of the first things you do is is write down your whys. Um, and I actually wrote mine down on paper because um, that for me made it more real, more tangible. I actually dug out what, what I wrote. And, and I wrote, um, I want to find a new purpose for the next, the next stage of my life and step out into the world to fulfill it. And you know what? Here I am, almost eight months alcohol free. Well, hey, and and that is starting to come true for me. I mean, James has given me the honor of, of being the community manager for the 30 day alcohol challenge. Um, best job in the world for me. I've only been there a couple of weeks and I love that community. Um, I remember reading somewhere that if you want if you want to find your purpose look look for where your heart is breaking mm, wow and in that community my heart breaks on a daily basis when i see people try fall get up again try fall again get up again and the community, the support in that community is is wonderful. Everyone supporting each other, but it breaks my heart to see people in the position that that I was in before I was able to tackle my alcohol problem, just not able finally to crack it. And you know, once you once you have a why in front of you, um, it's so much easier to see yourself through to the other side because you've got something to aim for, not just something to run away from. Right. That's so important. And be, um, Jenny, I want to stop for a moment. And because our format's a little bit different and we have our podcast listeners as well, I want to ask the Facebook Live participants, um, and we're getting a great following, Jenny. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey, be afraid. Be maybe, very afraid. Maybe one day we'll go viral. So keep uh, posting and saying hi and where you're from and ask a question, whatever. We're going to save that for the end um, and say hi to you and ask questions. But we want to just um, run through content and then address everybody. But we do love hearing from everybody and knowing who's who's here. So uh, feel free to say hi. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Jenny, that is such a a good point, and and that is something that we I think we all get stuck with. We we get stuck in the past, and we get um, we allow I think our paths are important to our lessons and learning and, and, and things. But I know along my journey, I've learned about looking forward. I did a podcast with Danny and he was great at, at explaining it. Like, yeah, I may be, I think I'm um, almost 11 months alcohol free as, as I count in the past, but this is day one of the rest of my life. And where can I go? And when you can get to look to that, when you can get beyond that, um, getting your body detoxed and really focusing on that why and starting to see it, it's like a, it's like a little train, right? That just it, it, that develops some momentum. And the thing you want to give yourself is enough momentum to start seeing that the why is possible. Because don't you think at the beginning of the journey? It's hard to see. Do you think? I think I think it can be. I think 
you know, in the early days, you're focused on on the physical stuff. Um, sometimes your motivation at the beginning is I want to feel better, I want to look better, I want to be healthier, I want to have more energy. Um, and those are all great things in and of themselves, but sometimes they're not, <clears throat> excuse me, they're not enough motivation to keep you going and keep you going. And, and you know, someone said at some point you've got to stop focusing on what you're running away from and look at what you're running towards. I think she said you've got to run towards a bigger yes. And, and for me, it was that bigger picture um, of, of what I had the potential possibly to become if I was always showing up as the best version of me. It was that bigger picture that that's what keeps me going, really. You know, I do like to think I look better. I'm I'm, I'm feeling so much better. I have much more energy, much more focus, much more clarity, all those things. But I just need to have that, that bigger thing that makes me feel... I get up in the morning and maybe just maybe today I'll do something that impacts on someone else's life in a positive way. Um, you know, going to bed at night, feeling you've been able to do that for me is, is just what keeps me going. Simple as that. Doesn't it seem, this is, I, I tell people this all the time, it's so hard as an enrollment coach to go like, the world seems so big right now. Doesn't the world seem bigger and like brighter and there's so much opportunity that I can barely like, it's just like being filled up. We have Warren, I love Warren. Um, what did he talk about? It's like when he drank, he describes it as, um, was it a parachute, Jenny? A that parachute. Was, yeah. And the parachute had no air in it. And it was just flat and deflated. And now living an alcohol-free life, it's like the parachute is filled with air. And that air is ideas and energy and thoughts and positivity. And like, I <laughs> want to go, ah! You know, like, does it, do you ever feel like that? Yeah. One of, one of the exercises that I, I first did when I was starting on this journey was the, the future self visualization, where you visualize where you might be in a year or two years or five years time, alcohol free, uh, compared with where you might be in that same time scale if you're not alcohol free. And, and what would your future self say, say to you now? And I think it's the wonderful Danny who always says, your future self will thank you so much for the decisions that you make today. For the hard work that you did today, right? Exactly. And, and it is a day at a time. And you can only take it a day at a time because we only have a day at a time. But I think with like that bigger picture of what might be possible in the future, it's hard to stick to that day at a time. Um, and, and the two go together, you know, Live in the now, enjoy the present, make the most of your present, and you'll do that when you're alcohol free. But but just have that that thing, that opportunity, that that vision to look forward to, because that's what's going to keep you on track in the longer term. In in my experience, anyway, it is. Um, and I just you know you hear that term one foot in front of the other, and it, it's so relative to this journey. And just having faith that there is an, another side. I just, I just recently, like now that I gave you my why, it just we have a situation that happened in the last. Oh, five I years. think you should tell us all about this, Roseanne. This is rather fun. <laughs> I got, I got permission to tell it too. So I. I actually had a date. I've had lots of dates and they're all disasters, like complete disasters and like three dates and you're out. And, um, but this particular date um, was interesting. Uh, and he, I told him what I did and, you know, you have to talk, I think about the alcohol thing when you're dating or I, I don't know. I find like I, I do. And we went off-roading and we were just having a, a, a fun time and I said, hey, on my Project 90, we do these things called Marco Polo videos. And I go, do you want to do it? And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, all right, you're already cool. Right? <laughs> and he did a Marco Polo with me. And I was able to go, look at us. We're having fun on our first date with no alcohol. But anyway, I, I we had a second date. And um, he said to me, you know, I love the fact that you don't drink alcohol. But 
I hate the fact that you don't drink alcohol too. And I'm like, why? And he was like, I don't know. I just have this association with, um, you know, maybe a vacation or the pool and having a margarita or Mai Tai or whatever. And I'm like, well, you can have that. I'm, I'm not stopping you. And he goes, I, and I said, well, why do you love the fact? And he goes, well, I've just been involved with too many women that are just heavy drinkers. And I just think at our age, you know, you want to just focus on health and, you know, you don't want to be with somebody who's drunk all the time. And so um, then we had a third date <laughs> and we ended up doing a dinner party together where um, he ended up having a couple of sips of wine, like a half or a quarter um, glass of wine. And we both drank the same, um, what was it? Uh, mocktail, I suppose. It was uh, sparkling water with plum juice. And, and it kind of looks like wine. You can make it fancy, you know. But he was drinking that with me. And then after that date, he said, I changed my mind. I love the fact that you don't drink. It was just I had so much fun with you. And he. what happened was, here's the interesting thing. He found it liberating to not feel like he had to drink. So understand you guys, like when you're going out with all your friends and feeling like you have to drink, everybody else is feeling the same way. <laughs> and if you can be the one that's like the non-drinker, you're setting the example, right? And I, that's how I felt about that situation. Like he confirmed that this is cool. Now, because you don't drink, I don't have to feel this pressure that I have to drink. Don't you think that's interesting? I think that's brilliant. I can't follow that story, Roseanne. There's nothing that interesting happening in my love life. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, well, I don't know where I don't know where this is going, but you know, it's just nice confirmation that you know, again, one foot in front of the other. There is this contingency of people, especially the older you get, that doesn't want to be involved with that drunkenness and yeah. hangover and you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of secrets involved with that. All yeah. right, well, let's start saying hi to everybody, shall we? I think Liz, Liz said hi. The, hey, Liz. Chanel said friend. hi. Hey, Chanel. Um, uh, Liam said hi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. He's our, you're our, our regular follower. You're our total <laughs> Hey, Julio, how are you? From Chicago, awesome. And Virginia, oh no, Wanda from Virginia. Well, we have, this is awesome. We're, we're, where's the UK people, Jenny? Where's the yeah, UK? Yeah, it's because it's half 10 in the evening. Every sensible person's in bed. <laughs> I think Melanie told us we might have a question, actually, Rosam. Okay, we'll wait for the question. Jamie. How long did it take you to feel like you were detoxed and what did you go through? Do you want me to go first on that, Roseanne, and then you yeah, can do this? Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, um, really good question. Um, the, the sort of caveat, I suppose, is it is different for everyone. For me, the first two or three days were pretty bad, and I kind of stayed in bed for most of it. But you know what, once you get the first week under your belt, you, you start to feel good. I think it takes about seven to 10 days to get alcohol completely out of your system. So once you get through that first week, you will start quite quickly to feel better. Um, if you're really concerned about it, do go to your doctor because they can give you medication which will help take the edge of withdrawal symptoms uh, in the first few weeks. And the added advantage of that is when you're on that medication, you absolutely cannot drink, so it might help you through as well. Um, sleep for me was the thing that took a, a lot longer to sort itself out, but I'm, I'm getting there now, and I'm not even going to start on sugar cravings and chocolate addiction. But, you know, don't worry. Eat what you like, just don't pick up a glass would be my advice. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I was, a, and, and this is a good example of everybody's different. So I had that fear of COVID coming in and my health. And remember, was it last week or the week before we were talking about 100% versus 99? So for me, the first three days to a week were easy because I was laser focused and scared and like, my mindset was good. And then then you have a little like, oh, wait, why did it get hard? Because you want every day to be an easy day. But I think in Project 90, first of all, <clears throat> most people, if, if you are to a point where you believe you need doctor's medication, that's probably the point where we don't handle that. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's a separate route. But most people in Project 90 inside 30 days, and I'd say before that, three weeks, like, wow, what, what day is it? 20, 20 18? Like, uh, you know, I, I find a very con consistent pattern to um, to that. Don't you, Jenny, when you see people at about 18, they're like... I they think for a lot of people, things start to click around about week two, week three. And what has been a struggle can become something that is just a bit more straightforward, both, both physically and mentally. That said, it really took me the whole 90 days of Project 90 to feel that I was pretty solid on the path. I had done the 30 day challenge, first of all. And when I got to about day 23 of that, I thought, mm, I'm, I'm getting there, but I'm still, I'm still that little chick that's just little chick. I'm not a little chick, but you know, the little chick that's just broken out of its, its shell. And, and I'm a little unsteady still. Um, but by the time I got three months under my belt, I, I knew I was solid. Um, so it, it, it will come. Be patient with yourselves, folks. It will come. Yeah. And, and as far as inside Project 90, what we do is, um, you know, we definitely wait for that initial, like, we look at, we ask people to make goals, small achievable goals. Like we talked about maybe making your bed in the morning, very achievable goals so you can feel the wins. Um, but once you're through that, okay, I think I got this. I think I got this. It's like, I think I can, I think I can, you know what I mean? It's like, yay, I don't, I don't count days anymore. It's like, okay, let's level up. Where else do you want to go? Like now that you got the drinking thing kind of handled, right? Because we want to create enough wins after the 90 days. When I talk in my enrollment calls, I go, here's the goal. By the end of 90 days, we want to say like, how do you feel? Do you want to continue the alcohol-free life? And the answer should be, hell yeah. <laughs> so you were you were pretty well uh, a solid yes too, right, Jenny? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, no going back for me of that. I'm beyond certain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, Warren. Warren, the parachute. <laughs> Warren, exactly. He says the parachute is now filled with air every day. Thank you, Warren, because I'm always going to use your examples. I think there's a, a telephone example. Oh, thank Cassandra is saying our thank stories you, are inspiring. Great to hear hearing you're doing good. Yes, there is another. Um, there is the other side, uh, everyone, and it's there for you. If it was there for me, I, I swear it's there for you. We are clicking down on time, so it's time to wrap up. Um, I would um, like to uh, tell you guys before we leave that we have the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle podcast. If you'd like to listen to my story, it's episode 19 Jenny's story is episode 39. We have we are up to 61 or 62 uh, uh, 62 podcasts. And that's a great way to just get some tips and stories and before and after inspirations. Um, also to learn more about what's happening in Project 90. Um, thanks for listening to us on the podcast and for being here live with us on Facebook Live. Uh, we will, if you're on Facebook Live, I'm going to put uh, a link in below about how to contact me and schedule an appointment if you're interested in discussing further how uh, Project 90 could change your life. 
I would love to talk to you about that. If you are listening on our podcast and you would like to schedule a call with me or any of our other enrollment coaches, go to www.jameswanwick, and it's S-W-A-N-W-I-C-K dot com slash schedule. And it's there where you'll answer some questions and you can pick a schedule um, with me or some of the other coaches and uh, talk more about Project 90. Jenny, did I miss anything before we sign off until next week? If if anyone is interested in the 30-day challenge, you can go to www. 30 day no alcohol challenge.com. Hope I've got that right. And just quickly, hi Sonia and hi Louise. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, in terms of our 30 day program, it's a great first um, step into the alcohol free lifestyle. It's a um, more of a do it yourself approach, but it'll, it'll support you for 30 days. There's some videos, there's a supportive community, and there's Jenny cheering you on every single day. Every minute of every day. At least that's what it feels like. <laughs> okay, guys, until um, next Monday uh, at 2 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see you then. See you then. Bye, folks. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple Podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time.